Listen, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had the craziest dream last night. Ida Hosa was in it. Are you a man that I've never seen face to face? I'm a man. 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 I'm I assume that something to do with that miracle at the hospital. I need my story. I need my story. This is it. All right? If I don't get my story today, this whole trip will be in vain. Welcome to Eastside. It's 3 p.m. and we're back at house number two. You know, I'm still wondering why that host that builds houses in the slum. That we can use the case. This is the other house of home. No problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, even the Jesus you keep talking about was careful when he was alive. Just wish I could do something about it. You can pray for him. Child, I have instructions from my pastor to come and wake you. Wake up! <laughs> Would you like to say the sinner's prayer and give yourself to Christ? Yes. It's beginning to come together. I first met Papa Ido Hosa in 1970 when the Church of God mission was uh, just starting and he invited me immediately to come and attend the church at Yaro. And by that time they only had about 100 members. But in two years they had more than 800 members. And uh, you see, one thing about Papa Ido Hosa, he loved God and he loved evangelism. God gave him the vision of the tree that as he took down people's loads in the, in the name of Jesus, symbolizing people finding the rest of faith, they're finding Jesus as their savior. As he helped people to take down their loads, the, the tree grew and spread. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa. He was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. Uh, the man of faith, the apostle, he was a gift from God for Nigeria and the whole world. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idahosa is a man that believes with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was the Dowser's level of faith beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Uh, the man who, by the power of the Holy Spirit, overthrew the predominant powers of, of witchcraft in, in Benin City, and many other areas. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents, 
and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the Word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Egbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in, in the preaching, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project we whites we or we boys would say why is he doing that we couldn't see the vision at all we thought hmm, this is very funny but then sometime later we would realize oh yes okay i see why he's done that now and i was a muslim that i gave my life to christ in Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. I'm getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. It was an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onitsha. And we went to put posters all over Onitsha. And the first day of the crusade, a track load of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started 
the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from, Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were on the, we have lost our way, we would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never 
took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took off that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his 
brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and the people say, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead. I said what? Raise the dead. I beg, wait till I Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I ride. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to the I said, It's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. 
That is how I'm a living soul today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping and all of a sudden the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed <laughs> 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 another girl died to me after a year and three months in the womb so my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me many said maybe i'm not a baby i'm a wood i'm this but for god be thy glory when they gave birth to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave birth to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. 
I have about eight children, two guys and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. I read this 35 years ago. All things are possible to him that believe. I read Matthew 10, 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead. I ask question, if you read my life story, fire his bone. Pastor, have you raised the dead before? He said no. Can I do it? He said yes. I took my bicycle. From 11 o'clock in the morning till 4 p.m. I was going from house to house. Is anybody dead here? They said no, oh God. <laughs> now that there are many people here. Because the sign of sin, you know that somebody died in Africa was a garden. Did anybody die here? They said no. What of death? Is anybody dead there? No. Four o'clock. I got to number six or seven. Lawani Street, Benin City. I met them shouting and wailing. What happened? Somebody died. I jumped up. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> they said, What are you happy for? I said, I've been looking for the dead for the last five hours. And they said, Here you are. Three years old child. I took the child. Amen, amen. Act of the zeal of ignorance. Hey, 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 hey. Pray. He died more. <laughs> Sweat came on me. I was looking for where to go out. There was only one door and it's blocked. Oh, God. Why did that tell him it's what I've been looking for since morning? I put the dead cops down. I turned to the Bible. He drove them all out. I said, okay, all of you, out. And they left. <laughs> Here's the cops. Here's the coffee. Jesus drove all of them out. So I said, all of you, go out. So they left, so that I can find door. <laughs> that was my joy. Not, not that I was too sure now the child will rise. I said, out, everybody. Now my eyes are red. <laughs> then I read the scripture. He said, damn sir, I say unto thee, arise. So with the last Samson's strength, with nothing to lose <laughs> except to escape, I thought the name of the one in the Bible was damn sir. So I asked the parent, what's the name of this child? This time I'm, I'm vexed. I'm furious. And they say, no, I say, okay. In the name of Jesus, no, I come up. And by the mercy of God, she passed a scripture on my shirt. And I slapped her three times. You silly thing. Look at my dress. I saw my dress before I saw that she was risen from the dead. And I began to jump. He's alive! Say, somebody say that. He's alive! He's alive! He's alive. She's, alive. She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! I began to dance, not minding the escrita on my shirt. I was jumping. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. The whole family began to rejoice. And the young man, Andrew, that came with me began to jump. Is risen. That was my first experience 32, 35 years ago. And after that, well, I brought the, I brought the lady out when you came to Benin. She's now a mother of seven children. And now a church in Benin, Aquarero. 
is still there. Many of the people raised from the dead that are in Benin, they are still there. Many of them have, many of people who have come. If you come in November, you still see them. It's not fake, it's real. You cannot say you raise somebody from the dead if you don't, they will sue you. I know many preachers that raise people in the air. Yes, I raised many people from the dead. But when you say, where's one? They say, not here. Seven or eight out of those I've witnessed are still alive. And the parents are grateful to meet you tomorrow. Bernard Eckhart's son was raised from the dead. A five years old boy taken to school. Had fever on the way. Died. The mother went to work to call the father. The father came to my working place six hours later. He said, he can't die. This child cannot die. This child cannot die. He's the only son I have. I said, let's go. I went there. Look at the child. In the name of Jesus, come back. God honored his word again. I saw that one. In Ghana, a man climbed up, painting a seven-story building, bank building. And the ladder slipped and head to the ground. And now the whole crowd ran away. And the Muslim was with me. The security and many other women and my wife were all there. I looked at this head split to two. I didn't know what to do. Suddenly I heard that's the works of the devil. Call him back. I got the head together. Ask of his name, call him three times, and the fourth time he answered. Today is a living witness, and he's not a preacher. And General Achapong, the head of state of Ghana, gave me national honor for raising that man back to the dead. To raise the dead is scriptural. But don't do it unless God tells you. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. I've seen many places they come and call me and say, can you raise the dead today? I say, no. That's not what I came for. But can it still happen? The answer is yes. Under the urge and persuasion of the Holy Spirit. It's not for a show. It's for demonstration that Christ has not changed. The sick, the blind see, deaf hear, dumb speak, the dead are, the word in English are, means more than one. Am I right in law? Are, A-R-E, are, raised. You can do it. I say you can do it. I say you can do it. Listen, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had the craziest dream last night. Idaho, sir, was in it. How can you be a man that's never seen face to face? I'm a man. 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 I'm a don't worry, I haven't gotten my interview with Idaho, so that preacher. I need my story. I need my story. This is it. All right, if I don't get my story today, this whole trip will be in vain. Welcome to this site. It's 3 p.m. and we're back at house number two. Do you know what you say that we can use this person? Idaho, sir. No problem. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I have instructions from my pastor to come and wake you. Wake up!